Taurus, it's me Stormy and here is your horoscope for February 2020 and I hope you guys enjoy the setup. I'll keep advancing and perfecting this. I'm learning about lighting so have some grace with me but let's talk about the cosmic weather that's coming up in February. We do have Mercury stepping into a retrograde. As always, just with the year in general, we've got Uranus in Taurus. So my Taurus friends, we're starting to move, we're acting, we're thinking a little bit differently and I just want you to know that I see you and I'm with you. So this will be a constant thing that's going to be in our scope for the month, okay? Now we've also got a full moon that's going to be happening in the energy of Leo, which tells me, Taurus, you're going to have some changes to the house or to your psychological foundations, which how could you not with Uranus and Taurus? As well, we are going to have a new moon that closes out our month in the energy of Pisces and I love this for your friendships, for your social things. And it's so beautiful, you guys, because whether you're listening for your sun, your moon, or your rising, what you're gonna notice is if you are listening for your sun, I think you're gonna really feel the weight of the social changes coming to you especially with Uranus in Taurus. Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. So as that energy is happening, you're shifting and you're changing and Taurus, it is beautiful, okay? All right, let's jump in here and talk about what's happening on this cosmic landscape this All right, month. right at the beginning of the month here on February 3rd, we're gonna see Mercury moving out of the energy of hyper thinking, hyper ideas, energy of Aquarius, and moving quite, quite uncomfortably into the energy of Pisces. Now, Mercury in the energy of Pisces is what we call fall. That's the state he's in because he's uncomfortable. Mercury wants details. He wants answers. He wants them quick. He wants things to be very efficient. And Pisces energy does not work like that. Pisces moves in between the world. It's very watery. It trusts the intuition. It trusts things that are maybe seen or felt, but not necessarily seen. It trusts information that is intuitive, not necessarily intellectual, right? So Mercury and the energy of Pisces and the planet has to get on board acting and getting things done like the sign. The planet does not get to come and dominate. The sign will tell you how that planet is going to get its business done. So here Mercury's trying to demand this thinking and these answers, but he can't see because the information is way too blurry. Now being in fall and not being at its full power doesn't mean that the planet is ineffective, right? So what do you do here? First of all, your mind is guided towards your emotions, towards your dreams, towards visions, towards symbols. You have to trust your intuition here, right? Because you're not thinking as logically. The logic does not become as entirely important in this energy. It really is the call back to the soul to trust your intuition. This is a great time to hear, listen, and to speak with empathy to the people, places, and things in your world. And I also think that this is a phenomenal energy for keeping a dream journal. If you have it, if you don't keep one, if you don't keep an astrology journal, this is a wonderful energy to be able to do that with as well. Now, that movement that happens here is in your 11th house, Taurus. This is so gorgeous. This is so, so gorgeous because what it means is spiritual friends. The friends, right? It's spiritual friends, though. Ones that you can trust. Maybe friendships that uh, have been quiet for a little bit and you're going back to them, especially with the retrograde, and you're listening. You're listening for what people have been going through. You're catching up. It's like this entry point for you to re-engage your intuition in a different way. I also feel like in the 11th house, this is sharing spiritual information. You're speaking, Mercury, writing, Mercury, spiritual information, information that's between the worlds. It's um, creative. There's maybe some poetry happening here, some music. You could be writing documents on, on specialized population, the elderly, babies, pregnant people. Maybe you're speaking somewhere about addiction or mental illness illness. Um, I think that this is a phenomenal energy for that. And it also will help you with Venus for just a couple days with these energies together for you to be received well in these social places or in the social things that you are doing. So I really do love the healing that comes with spiritual friends, spiritual social connections, spiritual visions down the road, right? 
February 7th, Venus is out of all that noise and she's ready to move on. And Venus will move here into the energy of Aries. So this will light up your 12th house space here. Now, Venus in Aries, she's not necessarily comfortable either because Venus wants to take her time, be indulgent, experience all the love, the gush, right? And Aries is like, let's do it now. Let's go. We're here to win. Venus is very much so about the everybody, and Aries is about the I, right? So in this particular position, and especially here in the 12th house, one of the things that it can bring, and I'm telling you straight up, it can bring flings to your table. It can even bring an old romance back, and it can be very friends with benefits kind of energy. So keep that in mind because Venus in Aries can be very impulsive. It can be very love at first sight, but you want to keep in mind Mercury's in Pisces. You may not be seeing all the information for what it is. So anything that steps into your life, I don't care if it's romance, I don't care if it's a quick opportunity for money, you get somebody to look over the fine print with you so that you have all of the details. Now, Venus in Aries as well, one of the things I love about this placement, and I have this placement in my chart, is that it will go after what it needs and what it wants. What do you want to do? What's your spiritual vision? What's your manifestation around your romance? What's your manifestation and your vision around your money, around your spiritual life? Taurus, what do you need to be doing to make yourself magnetic enough to call into your life the experiences that you want to be having? Where do you need to have the courage? Because Aries is courageous. It is here to win. Where do you need to have the courage to win against um, your delusion? Remember, the 12th house is the house of our own undoing, right? These are the attitudes, actions, behaviors that we have that that will actually keep us from being successful in our own life. So where do you need the courage to honestly, lovingly, diplomatically, because Venus is very diplomatic, to look at those things and clear them out of your way? Now, I do love, I do love the fact that this can also bring you back an opportunity to make money on something you were working at with the past or to put love into some kind of work that you're maybe trying to bring to culmination or you're trying to transition it into something else that down the road will help you financially as well, okay? All right, on the 9th, we have got a full moon happening in... Ugh the energy of Leo, okay? Now this full moon, the full moon says something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we're gonna make a shift. We're gonna bring an end or a transition or some kind of adjustment here that will kick whatever we're doing here back on track and allow it to move forward in a fresh start kind of way, okay? This is gonna be in your fourth house. Now the aspect that happens when we have a full moon, and don't worry, there's moon videos every month so we can really dig into it, so you're not gonna miss any of the astrology of it, okay? But the aspect that's happening is the sun and the moon are in opposition to each other. So what this tells me with this Leo who's brave, expressive, um, hard on the sleeve, it's very generous, bold kind of energy, it's in opposition to your, your work life up here, right? In some way up here in your work, I feel like, Taurus, you have been doing so much of joining the we, right? Put us out there. Let's be about this. Let's. How is this going to work in the future? And you have maybe missed out on the fact that your voice is being lost. Where do you need to self-express here? And this would likely be your balance between work and home, right? We've got the sun up here in the work area. We've got the moon down here in your home area. So in your home area, where do you need to ask for help? In your house, in your emotional security, in your needs, where do you need to ask for help? Where do you need to be more available to lend that help if someone is telling you that they need it as well. Now, the other thing I kind of think of in this fourth house zone is that for sure, this could just bring a change to your housing area. Maybe it's time to renovate. Maybe you are very much so very seriously considering a move in some way, shape, or form, or something around the physical housing area needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. Leo in traditional astrology is also the ruler of the fifth house. And while this is happening in your fourth house, the fifth house traditionally has to do with children as well. So something I'm thinking of here is that it is quite possible that there is a change or an adjustment happening for you around children or to a child in your life. So kind of keep that in mind as well. I don't know about you, but as a Taurus with children, I have got a young lady who's starting college tours as we move towards this March time frame. So, you know, you could see it a little bit earlier here in February. All right. On the 16th, we've got my man Mars up here. He's on the move, right? 
He's going to move over here. He's going to say, excuse me. Mars coming in and he's going to move into the energy of Capricorn. Now Mars in Capricorn is like, yes, they give each other a high five. The game is good and let's do this. Mars wants to do things. It's action, it's energy, it's movement, right? He's on the balls of his feet, ready to go, ready to do whatever needs to happen. Now he's a lot of energy, right? So in the energy of Capricorn, because the planet's got to get on board and act like the sign, Capricorn says, Mars, my man, I'm so happy you're here. Let me give you some structure for all of that energy and we are going to be productive. We're going to succeed. We're going to achieve. We're going to use these resources well. We're going to strategy. We're going to plan. We're going to win, right? So they do enjoy being in this exalted, delicious energy with each other. Now, Mars in Capricorn lights up your ninth house space. Couple things we're going to think about here, Taurus. First of all, the ninth house space, publishing, broadcasting, marketing, putting yourself out there in some way, foreign travel. And remember, travel here in 2020 can be you're making videos, you're putting that blog out there, or you're actually boarding the train, plane, or automobile, and you are flying. You are doing what you need to do to travel. But this is you getting out there, right? You've got Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter's over here, now Mars is here, and you've got a south node here. This is a packed house, Taurus. You are becoming some kind of subject matter expert out in the public and we can see you. Now this could also be with Mars here that you are doing something with translation so that um, other people can understand what you're doing. Maybe you're studying something in school. This is higher education, college and above. Training, do you have a new training that you need to take? Because let me tell you what, if you need a training or a degree, Capricorn's gonna make sure you have it, okay? So this energy is taking you forward. But here's the thing I want you to think about. First of all, Taurus, Uranus is in Taurus. Uranus is a social energy. He's shaking you out of your foundations. He's like, Taurus, um, you're too cute to be hiding back here with your information, with your talent, with your skills, with who you are. I'm going to shake you out of your comfort zone. I'm going to shake your identity up. And um, Saturn's going to be over here and help you put that out into the world, right? Now, as well, who's going to help you do that? Who are you talking to? Who's going to see this? Mercury tells us right here, it's your spiritual friends. It's your tribe. It's your grouping. It's whoever your message is pointed to, but it's right here and you're safe. It's in Pisces. You're safe. These are your spiritual guides, friends, and guardians, okay? So this is a very, very exciting move with Mars being here because you're definitely going to get some things done. The other thing I would tell you to consider about this, Taurus, is if you are running your life or if your life is running you, you might have to answer that question with your publishing, your broadcasting, your marketing, your studying. Where are you in or not in your driver's seat? Consider that, okay? All right, February 17th, we have got Mercury stepping into its retrograde. Now, Mercury is going to retrograde all the way until March 10th. The retrograde will be between Pisces and Aquarius, so your 11th and 10th houses, respectively, will be lit up. But we're going to start this retrograde here in the 11th house. Now, remember, intuition and empathy are key here because not only is Mercury in fall, but now he's in fall in retrograde, right? So this is really an interesting placement for him here. I can tell you that in the 11th house, consider other people's feelings. Consider the feelings of friends. Consider with Mercury retrograde. And in a retrograde, we go back. We re, we reconnect, we re-edit, we think, we re-evaluate, right? We re-surrender, right? Here, is there a friendship, love and house, that you're going back to? Is there a social grouping? Did you start that group on Facebook and you have done nothing in it, right? Like, are you going back to that? Are you re-editing? Do you need to check in with a friend or a social grouping from the past and maybe get caught up, maybe bring some healing, some closure, some transformation to that in some way, shape, or form? The other thing I think of during Mercury's retrograde here is whatever has been confusing, you'll have the opportunity to step back into and maybe get a little bit of clarity so that you can definitely bring that to a close, okay? February 19th, now we've got the sun jumping on board and also coming into this 11th house. Where the sun goes, it's light, heat, life, 
vitality. You are motivated to do the things that the sun is pointing you to, but you're also growing into what the sun is asking you to do. So you're motivated to move towards the lessons, but you are still growing here. So this is a time where you're developing the Pisces pieces of your chart, right? Here in the 11th house with Mercury retrograde, you guys, how do we grow forward? We look at the past. Where have I been? Right? Mercury is going to also ask you, what are your ideals? Who do you want to be? What kind of friend do you want to be? What kind of social person do you want to be out in the world? Because you are very public. And now Mercury is going to be over here helping you. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to show up as? But the sun is going to motivate you. The biggest thing that I get excited about is I see this sun saying, Taurus, the best way to have friends is to be a friend. Are you being a friend? Are the people in your tribe, have you found your tribe? Have you allowed them to come in? Maybe you need to go back to them and let them in, right? Are your, the people in your tribe, are they being friends to you? In your social networking, uh, the sun has got you motivated to update that LinkedIn, to get your resume updated, get those business cards, join that expo fair, whatever it is, you may be going back to something you've already seen, but you are motivated with the sun there. All right, on the 20th, we've got a neat aspect I want to talk to you about. So Jupiter, who's up here in the energy of Capricorn, is going to come into a sextile with Neptune. Let's get rid of that one. With Neptune, who's in a sextile there in Pisces. So this is your 9th house and your 11th house, okay? They're interacting nicely. When the planets have sex, that's good for us because it means not only is there a pocket of opportunity, right? But you're going to intelligently take action on it. You're going to be moving on whatever this is. So between your 9th and your 11th houses here, what's happening is Mercury's got you flipped around backwards, right? This is a social place. You're having to go back to something social, a friendship, an old idea, an ambition, a cause that you were maybe a part of before. You're going back to it. You're motivated. You're re-looking over this area, but the information and intuition that you are getting getting from here is going to be your motion forward, right? You have to step to the past. You have to get some clarity in order to push it forward. These are all forward moving planets right now, you guys. So in this ninth house, I know something from the past will be on your table. Some clarity will be on your table and you will be stepping it forward. This affords you the opportunity to progress in a way that you have not progressed yet here in 2020. So there's gonna be some work. And again, I bring up this idea of your ideals. Right Between who you are in your social grouping and who you are putting yourself out there in your travel, in your studies, what are your ideals? If you don't know your ideals, if you don't know who you want to be, you don't know what you want to be able to bring to the table, how can you know that you're growing towards it? Right. So you've got to get pen to paper, sit down, get these ideas grounded. In the energy of Pisces, nothing's more ideal than that. But your ideals and what you want to stand on will take you forward, okay? All right, to wrap up this month on the 23rd, we're going to have a new moon happening in the energy of Pisces. Now, the aspect that happens when we have the new moon, and again, there will be moon videos, is the sun and the moon are together. It's our insides and our outsides together, which means anything's possible. Our luminaries are dancing together here. So in the energy of Pisces, this lights up your 11th house space, right? So this is friendships. This is, this is prayers, this is praying together, this is joining your tribe. At the new moon, we plant the seeds of intention. Remember, the new moon is the darkest, most quiet, most calm part of our moon phase. So you're planting these seeds of intention in the dark, but you say, you know what? I've got some ideals. This is the friend I wanna be. This is the teacher I wanna be. These are the organizational beliefs or my ambitions that I want for my life going forward. And you plant those seeds of intention. And maybe you do it alone by yourself. You have a little ceremony by yourself and you're alone with your thoughts and you are celebrating the glory of your life, of what you want going forward, of your spirituality, of your research, of the culmination. It's almost birthday time, Taurus, the culmination of another year saying thank you to a person that you have been for a year, five years, 20 years, and allowing them to transition in or out as need be, right? This is a wonderful position of glory with the new moon happening in Pisces. And I will also tell you this as well, because this is your 11th house, um, I just keep being shown visions of yoga, right? So um, 
if this is a, a thing where you're getting together maybe with a friend or a grouping or something like that and you're doing yoga, you're doing a meditation, you're doing a breathing class, you're you're going to check out, you know, the 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 four agreements or the absolute truths, whatever it is, there is a joining that could be happening here as well that is taking care of a very social yet solitary piece of you this month, Taurus. So I think it's going to be a gorgeous month. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you for being with me as I learn. You know when you're learning something, you suck at first. It's just real rough. I'm learning about lighting, about this new space at my new home. So I appreciate you being with me while I learn. But hopefully you're getting a beautiful view of your cosmic weather that is, uh, that is on, the, uh, on the board for you this month. All right, Taurus. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. If you're a lighting expert, feel free to put a little something down that in, in the comment section down below. But just know that no matter what happens this month, I love you and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye, Taurus.